Hello, everyone, and welcome to the day five of the GTC. This is the end of our first week doing this. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at, uh, I think, uh, one of the most important parts of the, G of the Google Suite, and that is Sheets. Uh, sheets and Forms um, work together, or you can have Sheets as a standalone. So today we're looking at it as a standalone. Why is, do I like Sheets and Forms so much? Simple. The, the key to running an efficient classroom is data. Collecting data, interpreting data, sharing data. Uh, this is the way that you can understand if your teaching is taken hold, if kids are understanding what you're doing, and if you respond to it. You know, instead of the, well, look, everybody flunked that test, I guess they don't know what they're doing, and then moving on. We have to appreciate the power of what data is trying to tell us. So that's why I like forms and sheets so much. Um, I am responding, though, to a question that came over my uh, SMS text number, which is 502-457-2937. Uh, it's kind of like I'm running a radio telethon, right, where I'm trying to get you to give money to public radio, and I keep repeating that phone number over and over again. But this one had, to, this was a good point. It said, hey, Steve, um, you kind of blew right past the whole template in a, in a uh, slides presentation. What are we doing? Well, let me show you real fast. It's real easy. First thing you want to do, um, let me get us a new spreadsheet so I don't mess up our pretty one that we made. So once you're in your spreadsheet, you want to title it. You want to give it a title that includes the word template, not because this does anything special, but because this is how you can um, delineate it, differentiate it from the other million and one slide presentations you'll end up having before it's all over one. So this is a, this is a class template. My next step is I want to come down here to view and look at my master. This is where the work is. So at this point, you can change up uh, the style, the look, and all that sort of stuff that goes into your thing. So you can go ahead and put a title to it and call it class assignment. And then you can uh, put into it the things that you want the kids to, to do. You can, in other words, you can scaffold it. That's what I'm trying to say. So this is how you basically set up your wonderful uh, master slide. Um, make sure that when you're doing this, that you are consistent. Okay. So in other words, all you're doing is you're going in here and you're making, you're, you're looking at the different kind of pages and things that you'll be working with. And you're going to change up what's on those pages. That's all. But here's the thing. When you get done with all this and it has saved itself, you can now go find it and put it in to your presentation here. Let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go look for presentations that I want to use as an import of my theme. Um, and I can, you know, decide all kinds of things. But once I get it decided, there we go. What I can do and you know how to do this now. It's, this is where I go give it out to everybody. So I go to share, and I share it with all the kids in my classroom, or I share it with uh, groups of kids, depending upon, you know, if I want to give them something harder, something easier to do. And of course, I can put in groups of people here so I can have collaborators. That's all. That's all there is to, to making a template. The key is, Create it, name it, put the word template in it, and go to view, go to master slide to set up your look, how you want it to look, how you want the thing to, um, what, you, what you want it to say. If you want kids to do that, um, you can come down here and change the background. You can put a different image in. 
you know, it's it's almost limitless what you can do. Um, and of course, you can do a Google search. I could sit out here and I could look for a certain image that I might want to put. Remember, we kind of played around with planets for a little bit. I don't know if this would be an appropriate background to put in. Okay. So now I have, you know, a look. But the thing that I really want to stress is the fact that when you go in, you can change up what the, the verbiage is on the screen so that you can say that you want the kids to put in certain things in these locations. Okay. Simple, simple, simple. All right. Now let's get out of there. And I'll close all that out. Let's look at our scenario for today. Today we're playing with our Google Sheet that we've already created that's called Google These Numbers. It wants us to do an average function to average the students from exam one and two. Uh, and then it wants us to share that Google Sheet, huh, with both Miss Fissett and Principal Brandon. Well, yay, we'll do that. Uh, then the second part of it is we're going to open the Google Sheet titled Google These Numbers. We're going to do an add the class average below the last student name so we can kind of see what the average score, I guess. Um, and then average its scores from exam one and two in the overall class average using the average function. Uh, Mrs. Fissett is a bit overwhelmed with all the data. We would prefer a more visual representation of the information. I don't know why. So we're going to open that up and we're going to make a chart. Okay. Well, all the things we do, this, is, this isn't hard. Um, I'm always surprised how people get uh, intimidated, I guess is the right word, by class, by averages. So let me go ahead and clear up some things here because I did have some stuff I have been playing around with just to make sure. All right, now we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing it's asking us to do is it wants us to average out the scores of the students who took these tests. And let's see, it also wants us to share the class average with, uh, who are we sharing it with? Both Ms. Fissett and Principal Brandon. All right, let me show you how to do this. First step first, you go in and you say, this is where I'm going to put my average. Now, you always want to label it. And we, we labeled this average when we created it. Let me show you how easy this is. So you go up and you could insert a function. Functions are the heart and soul of a spreadsheet. This is what makes a spreadsheet a spreadsheet. And there, there are literally books written on using functions in spreadsheets. One of the nice things about what the Google has done is they put the simplest ones, uh, the most used ones, frankly, first. So as you can see, I'm going to go average. And now all I have to do to get the average that's going to go in that cell is to drag over the data that I want to average, hit return. And there you are. It is as simple as that. Now watch this. This gets to the point of being too cool for school. What I can do is, is I can say, would you please do that same average function that you just did for Bill and do it now for Susan and Sam? Boom. Again, too cool for school. Isn't that neat? I don't know. I just, uh, I just think it's neat. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are multiple ways of doing functions. One of the things you can do is, and this, this goes back to the original way of doing functions, or doing this, is you can type in a equal sign. And the equal sign basically is an indication that whatever comes thereafter, you're doing something with it. But because it's so much easier just to go insert and then go find that function that you want to use and then do it. I mean, you know, it's just, whoops. It is just so simple to do that. All right, so oh, we've got to share this. So 
let's go share it with our good friends at GCE level one. Hopefully it'll pop up. Yay. There he is. There's Principal Brennan. Okay. And I'm going to add some more people. GCE level one parent at gmail.com. Got him. Now, remember, let's check that uh, assignment again. Are we supposed to give these guys editing rights? Doesn't say. I'm not going to get, give them editing rights. I'm just going to let them see it. Done. Okay, so now we've done that part. Open and open the Google Sheet titled Add uh, Class Average below the last student name, A5. And I've already done that. And now it wants me to do the average of the scores for each one of the tests. How do we do that, folks? I'm waiting for the answer, which, of course, I can't hear because you're all at home. So I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to go function, and I'm going to go average, and then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to average, boom, 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 and then hit return. Okay. Think of the return key as the enter key on your um, calculator. Insert, function. Average, highlight the text that I want to use. Boom. Oh, by the way, this is one of the things that the test does that does kind of aggravate me. Have you noticed that the averages are the same? I went back and double checked that by actually doing them with a calculator. They are the same. I think that's a little I think it's a little unnecessarily tricky, if you ask me. Oh, we're supposed to do the overall class average as well. well. Again, you'll see when I do this. And I guess maybe somebody at the Goog thought that was cute that they did that. I don't know. Bang. You know, but if, if you're already in a mode of being a, uh, a jittery test taker and you see something like this pop up, that's really going to throw you because you're going to be like, wait a minute, why are those numbers the same? And then you waste time sitting there with your calculator trying to, you know, see it there. Let me tell you, it's legit. Okay, so that was, boy, that's easy, isn't it? Okay, now we're supposed to generate a chart. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to highlight everything and just pull it all out and get it all together because what I want to do is. Come on, mouse. I'm having trouble with my mousey. Doesn't want to drag over and grab all this data. Let's see if I can. I don't want to do it that way because then it'll start putting things in. Now just go up here and do it. And come down here and do it. Come on, mouse. One, two, three, four. All right. That should do it. And I'm going to now insert a chart. And there we are. Okay, so it says visually pleasing. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's not correct. I don't want that. All right, I'm having trouble, folks, with my mouse not putting all the information together that I want. It's like it's grabbing everything, uh, but not letting me have just some specific things. So I apologize. Uh, let's try it one more time here. That's better. Okay, now we got it. So what we're looking at here is, you know, the information that generated from our wonderful little, um, well, here's part of the problem right here. See, that got changed. So let's fix that, shall we? Exam, 
one. Thank you much. Hey, extra points if you notice that it changed as it did in the chart. All right, so it's supposed to, we're going to do a chart here. We can change the chart look, the style to where it's pleasing. I don't know what that means. So I'll come over here and look and let's see, chart styles. What can I have? Um, I can have anything I want. Ooh, 3D. There is something cool. I think that's pleasing. What do you think? Okay, I can change my, what kind of chart it is. So if I want one that's sort of a stack chart, you know, I can do that. Um, you know, yeah, all these different looks. Uh, remember though, what do charts do? That's, it's a really great opportunity when you work with kids with charts is to help them understand how we're comparing data, data against data, uh, trends and data, so on. It's a great, it's a great tool for that. So I'll go back to the original one. Okay, I got a pleasing chart. It wants me to take this chart and put it in an email that I'm going to send out to, I think, Miss Fissett, it wasn't it? So I'm going to get a share Google Doc and paste it into a new Google Doc called Exam Averages. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to go up here to my materials. I'm going to create a new Google Doc. And I'm going to tell it right away. Remember, one of the first things you want to do is you want to name everything when you come into it. So I'm going to do chart. I'm having trouble with my mouse today. I think it's running. I'm using a, a, a Apple mouse, the kind that plugs in to get charged. I think that's my problem. Okay, so I've called it chart averages. I've copied my chart. I'm now going to paste it in. Do I want to link it to the spreadsheet? Ooh, this is one of the coolest things you can do. Does it say anything in here? Copy the chart and paste it into a new Google Doc called exam averages. Why would I link it to the spreadsheet? Any data that I change in the spreadsheet will change the chart. So if I send this to, let's say, Principal Brandon, and he wants to see how my kids do over the semester with their classwork, uh, specifically maybe test work, if I link it to the spreadsheet, and when I go in, and every time I go in and add the new data into my spreadsheet, he'll see it change on his spreadsheet. So I'm going to say yes. This is one of the best things about working with uh, spreadsheets, charts, and all this sort of thing. It is just the easiest way to see what happens uh, when, you're, when you've got data. And, and again, like I said, this is one of the things that we have a tendency to kind of overlook. Um, I'm going to see. We're going to add a new person in here. And we're going to call this one Steve. Steve came to my class later in the year. Um, and we're going to put in Steve's grades. Sorry about that. We're going to put in Steve's grades on the test that he did. And we can see right away that Steve needs help. Okay. Now, if I go over here and open up this, what I should see is my data has changed over here. Now, folks, that's just flat cool. That is just flat cool. And because it is flat cool, it just really helps in seeing how this all works. Okay, last step. Share it. Who are we sharing this with? Let's fix it. Yep. So she is GCE level one. Again, we don't want her messing with our data. <laughs> so we're just going to allow her to view. 
Here we go. Easy peasy. Sheets. Uh, on the test, we'll look at some of the questions here in just a second. This is all it's going to ask you to do. Uh, you know, you'll be fine. Take your time. Realize these little tricks I've just shown you about building things. Um, when you want to do a function, you just go insert down the function. It will not ask you anything harder than sum or average. Okay. Um, and then creating all of this, you just basically highlight all of this and you go up to insert chart. Boom. There you are. Let's go back and look at our questions for the day. So here's the duh question for the entire training. Which Google tool allows you to create a spreadsheet? Well, duh, Steve, it's Sheets. <laughs> Google Sheets can be exported to the following formats. Oh, this one is kind of a tricky one and a good one. So you have XLS, RTF, CSV, and then you've got the two answers down here. Uh, and XLS is, as you probably already know, is the Excel spreadsheet extension. RTF is rich text format which is how you can take um, things that have been formatted in other document types and put them in. CSV is comma separated values. Comma separated values is how you can take a Word document or a Google Docs document. And if you have information in there that you would like to bring into a spreadsheet and have it put it into the various cells and everything, you, you basically put your data in separated by commas. Hence the name comma separated value. So the answer, of course, then would be A and C. Comments and spreadsheets can only be edited or deleted by the owner of the spreadsheet. You know that one now. That's true. Students should use the right tools for each of their classroom tasks. Match the most appropriate Google tool for each task by moving the rows up and down. Um, well, I messed this one up. I'll fix it. But as you can see, I've already given you the answer. So data analysis will always be sheets. Viewing assignment details and turning in work diligently. That's what your classroom is for. Creating images, charts, and mind maps is drawings. Online research for an essay is search, of course. Creating a group presentation is slides. How can you tell which cell is currently edited by another collaborator? Do you know you can do that? Of course you did. Because you can collaborate anything inside of the G Suite. Um, it's A. So in other words, if you see that someone that you have allowed to have editing rights to your spreadsheet is working within there and changing things up, where they worked will be highlighted in yellow. You have created a class roster in Spreadsheet. Which feature allows you to change this roster from an assignment template made in Docs? Whoa! There's a one that'll blow your brain cells. It's right here. It's add-ons is the answer. And by default, it's right there. It's called Docupus. Docupus, I guess. Um, when you launch it, it opens up a little box over here on the side. And what it allows you to do is to take data uh, from your spreadsheet. Okay. And you're going to put it into a roster. That's what it exactly asks you to do. And then down below is where it starts to, you, you say, well, this is where you go find the information you want, et cetera, et cetera. That one is, whoa. But now you know, it's add-ons. You have recorded task results in a spreadsheet, which feature will allow you to automatically calculate your student averages. You have, if you don't know this one, I'm giving up. Functions. In spreadsheets, it is possible to chart multiple ranges of data. Yep. In the sheets, revision history changes are not color-coded based on each collaborator, but students can tell, tell, that's false, you know that. Blank and spreadsheets are helpful way to leave notes, and that's comments. That is, could be, you know, if, if I wanted to get on my high horse and yell at the Google folks, that's a tricky question. The obvious answer is comments, and you know that, but you also can leave notes in a Google uh, spreadsheet. And to leave a note in a Google spreadsheet is nothing more than highlight the cell and you do a right click and see down here? So you can leave a note or you can leave a comment. Well, the comment is exactly what you think it is. It'll do the comment. In other words, if I click on it, it does that, okay? If I do a note, it basically 
leaves me a place to write that's in the spreadsheet. So in other words, if you wanted to put something here, yeah, let's see, are the scores correct? Or if you wanted to uh, go in and leave something that basically says, this is how I did this, that's a note. Comment, to my little brain, a comment is where you're basically saying, you know, stuff about what you're seeing in that particular area. So, sorry about that. The, long, the answer is D, comments. When storing test scores in a spreadsheet, which feature allows you to automatically highlight any cell containing a grade below 80? Another good one. Um, and I'm surprised they don't make you do this on the scenario. This is called conditional formatting. This is another good one. Excuse me while I clean up my desk here a little bit. So what is conditional formatting? So conditional formatting is a way that you can determine how your data shows up. So in other words, if you want to know Here's the range that you would create. Now, I, I need to go back and let's see, let's define that range better. So I can add another range so I can say, let's trash that one. So I can say, here's the range that I want to look at. So I'll go over here and you can see what it's doing. Okay, so it's adding in the range. I can then go in and I can put in these different things. So if what it's asking in that question was, how can you, can you what would you use to show uh, data above, grades above 80, right there. So you put in, so I want you to show me just the things that are greater than 80. When scoring test scores, how do, highlight, how do you automatically highlight any cell containing a grade below 80? Well, I would have had to done below conditional formatting. Cool stuff. This this is just some cool stuff that is available to you in um, spreadsheets. So you basically you're going to and saying here, oh, you've got data in there, good. And then I can come down here, and this is where my drop down is. Data is less than. 80, and I can put that in there, or I can put a, fo a formula in there, and then it will show me that. Cool, huh? All right, uh, I put in down below, here are the sheet uh, quiz cards, some patch cards from our good friends at Quizlet. Big friend, like Quizlet a lot. Autofill allows you to copy data to adjacent cells by select, that's what we did, by the way, to do the averages. Remember how Steve did that cute little thing where he went in and he clicked on a cell and then he did this little trick. Okay. When you do that, then whatever you, where you start from, which would have been the average function below. And if I come up here and highlight that and pull it all the way down, that's a, that's a good one. What's ascending? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Autofill, we just did that one. Cells, you know what cells are. Those are the little blocks. Columns, those are the ones that go up and down. Column header, you always have to put column headers in if you're going to do a chart. You know that. Conditional formatting, you just saw it. You know, it well, no, conditional formatting is something is this and something is that. It will do it, which is cool. Descending, going down. Expression, let's see how they just tried it. Spreadsheets can be created with formulas. Okay. So an expression is using a formula. Well, that is new. So what how they describe formula? A series of data put together to perform calculations. We knew that one. Merge. Combine two or more cells with a single rectangular area into a merge cell. Pattern. Content repeats in a consistent way. That's one of the reasons why you want to look at a spreadsheet or have a spreadsheet because you're looking for those patterns. Uh, kids seem to do great on this test, but not so great on that test. Wonder what's wrong with the test or wonder if I'm not a good job with the instruction. Row, row, you know what row and row header are. They go across. Okay, sort, 
same thing. Sort is the same thing in a spreadsheet as it is in anything else. It's rearranging the order based upon conditions that you give it. Let's see how it describes a spreadsheet. Lay up information range in rows and columns in a table. Okay, I'm not going to keep going through all of these because there's 25 of them and you couldn't do it. The thing that makes these um, important is that they do reflect the questions that are on the test. We are at the end of day five. I hope you are finding these um, little training videos that I've put together informative, helpful. Uh, I hope you are at the point with some that you're going, really, Steve? Really? I know all this. And that's good. That's really, really good. And I hope that what I'm doing here by showing you all of this um, is bringing down whatever anxiety you may have about the test. It's not hard if you prepare. Um, if you know your basic understandings of how Google works, you will be fine. Now, every once in a while, they'll slip in something on you. It's a little esoteric. You know, it's a little bit uh, random. But most of the time, the stuff that's there is stuff you know. Now, for next week, Scenario six, we will be looking at looking at sites. Sites is probably the most um, out there, if I can use that word. Uh, most schools, you know, if, if you're going to have um, websites, it's done through a school template that the district has put together for you, et cetera, et cetera. And people will jump up and down and scream at you about you have to be careful about putting stuff out on the web for the public to see. Well, we're going to go through that and we're going to make sure you understand how to turn all that stuff on and off. So that will be on day six, which will be next Monday. As always, as always, if you have questions, comments or concerns, reach out to me at 502-457-2937. And as always, stay safe and take care of each other. We will get through this. We will all be together again. And when we do, we can look back on this and go, you know, I was able to pass my Google certification test just by listening to that guy talk for 10 days. See you the next time.